Hello and welcome, this is Louis Velez, and I'd like to introduce you to my comparison of the two versions of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Directed respectively by Niels Arden Opleff and David Fincher, the movie revolves around two central characters, Mikhail Blunkfist, a disgraced journalist who takes an odd job from a wealthy industrialist to solve the mystery of his niece's murder, and Lisbeth Salander, a resourceful computer hacker who's hired to help investigate numerous murders that may actually involve Harriet herself. Now, in the very beginning, we see a stark difference between the way Lisbeth is introduced. In the Opleff version, she appears rather suddenly in her office, been called by her boss to verify a recent report she'd done on Blunkvist. However, there's no build-up to this. There's just a brief conversation between her boss and Dirk Freude, the assistant of Henrik Wanger. In his version, Finch gives us a bit of a build-up to Lisbeth. In a conversation between her boss and Freude, he describes her as being someone that nobody else seems to like and prefers working at home. Or rather, she's asked to work at home. In the meantime, she's rolling up in her motorcycle, storming in bits and pieces to the office. Even in such a subtle thing as a card swipe, you see a great deal of pent-up aggression. Between the two versions, the lighting and color grading differs very much. In Oplev's version, the lighting is somewhat natural and neutral, as is befitting an office setting. You really don't get much of anything out of it, but with the Fincher version, the lighting is a lot colder, a lot bluer which sets actually a good bit of the tone for the rest of the movie. You get this impression often that it is a very harsh environment, a very harsh time, and accompanies Lisbeth as a rather harsh human being. Even the relative positioning between all three of the characters in this scene uh, differs greatly. In the Oplef version, you get more of a feeling that the men are enclosing in on her. They use a telephoto lens to basically kind of give a claustrophobic sense where you've got her boss on one side and Frode on the other side, and you get this feeling that she's kind of sandwiched in between them, whereas in the Fincher version, she is visibly more withdrawn, sitting herself on the far end of this table, not even making eye contact with the people in the same room. Now, that does carry over to the central premise of her character, where she's basically socially withdrawn and pretty much subsists within the cracks and shadows of the system that ironically has her chained up to a rather unpleasant fellow who you know, leads to the one of the more disturbing scenes throughout the movie. Now, Bierman isn't the only case of a monster who's comfortable with what he is, uh, underneath a veneer of civility. We get a nice taste of that with Martin Wenger, and let's focus in these words from Harold Wenger for a second. Hide the past like they do? Under a thin, shiny veneer, like an IKEA table. Now, in this one sentence, the actuality of what Martin is is covered up in its entirety. The movie was leading up to this with bits and pieces there. Finch actually did a really good job of setting up these little pieces that eventually make sense once the whole puzzle's been put together. In the opening dinner scene, the quote unquote wind sounds, which, if you compare them with the wind sound as Mikhail searches his home, sound vastly different the telescope that's been imp you know precariously placed and the not so subtle showcases of uh, rifles that also carries over to martin as the killer in opleff's version he's sudden he's intense he very suddenly drugs mikhail and then in his kill room which is you know very brightly lit so you can see each one clearly he shows his fangs he shows who he really is. He's insidious. He's monstrous. There's really no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's just right out in the open. But Fincher's Martin, he is obviously still holding on to that Spill your drink. very civilized facade. Yes, he's reveling in what he's doing, uh, but he has almost this Hannibal Lecter kind of persona. And the setup of the kill room in the Fincher version is vastly different because he stresses the importance of discipline, taking the time to actually disinfect his hands before performing the deed. And one thing that's really important in this scene is that Martin sits in the shadows. 
he has a very comfortable place to sit. He is sitting back with his own intentions in that darkness while Mikhail is exposed. We are already getting this feeling of desolation and hopelessness, which is not on the Uplift version. The Uplift version goes for a race against time. It's a more intense kind of, will Elizabeth get there in time? With Fincher, Fincher goes for that sense of he's already kind of screwed. Martin has the upper hand. There's no way that he can be stopped at this point. Because at some point, he's just going to do what we expect him to. Hey. Overall, I have to admit, while I do enjoy the Swedish one a little bit more, I can't help but respect and admire the amount of detail that Fincher put into his interpretation of the story. With that all said, that has been my uh, little insights into this movie, and I hope you enjoyed. I am insane. Nod. <laughs>